everybody, Mike Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. I always say it, but this is going to be a really short one, and I think I mean it. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've gotten done. This will be update 31, and let's get into it. Okay, kids, we're going to start right here. I showed you last time that I had the Indian Ruins glued in place, but I finished the trees along the top of there, and I have washed that particular... Um, backdrop with kind of a uh, dark gray very light wash you can actually see part of the wash right there and it just mutes it down and tones it down a little bit and I may do the rest of these I'm not sure haven't gotten there yet because I think most of them is are going to be covered but anyway let's let me step back here I just finished as you can see by the glue there the foam tack just finished pulling up the one inch piece of foam I had there and I had gone to Lowe's today and I bought this piece of uh, half inch because it was too tall and where my switch comes off right there it didn't meet up properly now it will most likely be fine and it will still be level coming out here to the mine so I had to reduce the thickness of that is what I'm saying by some amount hopefully half inch but anyways uh, a lot more cutting to do a lot more things to do up here but at least that's on the right grade now now I'm gonna kinda walk around here a little bit and I'm just going to pan around here and I'll stop as I see things that I've done. Of course, you saw me finishing those in the video. I just mixed a couple of plasters together here to see what would happen. This is a combination of the uh, gypsolite that we have and the uh, mold scene that Woodland Scene makes. I don't like it. I don't like the texture of it. It's too heavy. Uh, I prefer mixing some regular plaster in with the gypsolite and putting it on there. It covers much better. It's easier to spread. But, on the other hand, I have along those two walls there completed enough. And I won't change that. I just don't care for it that much. Um, and then as I swing around here, you can see that I put the dead treetops in. And I put some little wisps of green along the top. Going around the corner, I put the treetops in. Back over there in that corner, I have changed what was a mountain with a bunch of trees on it into a rock formation back there. A lot of that will be covered as well. And that is a joint where those lower rocks are there, which I tried to touch up the best I could. Just like I say, some of that will be covered up. Not exactly sure what's going back there yet, but... And you come around, you can see that I have, for the most part, I missed a couple of saguaro cactus in this. I believe you can see one right in there somewhere and one right over, I don't know, somewhere over in there. Somewhere right over there. i got to get those painted out because we don't have any saguaro cactus there. Either that or I'll have to put something in front of it to, to hide those. Either way, it'll work. Um... But these are over here, and these kind of really do need to be toned down as well with a wash. I'm thinking now as I'm going around with the camera here, I was thinking no, but I'm now I'm thinking yes to the whole thing. Anyway, if I come around here, you can see that I kind of colored this in a little bit darker right in here. And I put the oil fields, or the oil field, the two oil fields, um, Detail Associates I think they were, in there and then there will be terrain that goes up and meets that on the inside so actually I'm good all the way around to here uh, I'll probably put some trees and bushes or rock formations or something in here to kind of break up this starkness between the two the dark and the light but I really like the oil field back there and then the rest of that will just be base uh, base type scenery as the mountain over there and it will be painted and you've seen all this around here um, I don't know oh what I another thing I have to do that I have not done is where these are offset where these bridges are offset 
I need to make some um, bridge piers to put underneath there. And I think what I'm going to do is take a piece of cardboard and make a little template there, and then I'm going to make those out of uh, sheet styrene and styrene square, and just make them in a Z shape, or I guess it would be, yeah, I guess it's a Z shape, and then some small wing walls that come out out of the same stuff. And over on this side, I will only need to make one side because you won't be seeing the other side. But I've got to get some bridge piers in there. That one's driving me crazy. I'm also thinking, of course, I got all my junk up here. Hang on. I'm thinking about putting an underpass over here, uh, maybe a tunnel. And then on the other side over there, I want to build that up with this either one inch or half inch foam and put some buildings up on the foam and disguise those curves back there. Kind of, kind of semi-hide those curves back there. Um, that'll be no big deal. I got a lot of back pain right now from leaning over and working on the backdrop. So I'm going to rest up for a little bit. Um, what else can I tell you here? I guess that's really about it. I, I have run trains around. Let me turn around slowly. <clears throat> um, I have this locomotive and this uh, tail car here, which is a BNSF executive car. Um, I'll take a close picture of this. This is one that Gavin weathered from a picture of a real locomotive. Uh, he was extremely happy with it. I'm happy with it. And um, he has decided that he's going to keep that one and it's going to live out here on the layout somewhere. Or at least in his box until we get ready to run that era of trains. But I thought he did an exceptional job on the, on the uh, burn spot and uh, the weathering in general. And he wanted me to show you guys the work. Um, I have I had a guy question me as to whether double stacks will go through the tunnel portals. I have these standard height stacks. Uh, they go through, but I'm not sure. I, I'm 99% sure that uh, high cubes won't go through there. But I don't run that era. I don't plan on running the era where we didn't have just 40 foot containers. And if it becomes a problem, we will do what they do in the real railroad, and we will restrict those cars to single level. Uh, they do it back east all the time in small tunnels, and we will just do it here on the ACT. If, you're, if, if, the, if the load is too high or too wide, it will just be restricted, and you won't be able to run it on the railroad. Um, I had this back, these uh, backdrop buildings right here. One of them is facing forward and then the rest of them are facing backwards. Don't ask me why I did that. It's kind of dumb. But I think they look good together. And I'm going to do some more of those. The, I think I've mentioned to you that the bowling alley will go in there. That building will not go there. That little building will go in, pardon me, in there somewhere. And possibly that one down on the end. The pre-made one right there, the barrel factory or whatever it is, it will not go there. And I may do some painting on those two laying on the ground there, weathering of those. But I like this one, I just don't like that front facing this way. But I'm going to uh, low relief those, I'm going to make them about the depth of that little building right there. And then they'll be sitting up on the level, which will inevitably put them about that high. Because I'll level up this... This foam is on an angle, and I've got to level it up. I should, I should have done that differently, but I didn't. So, anyway, that's the thought there. And as I said, this is just going to be real short. Nothing new down at this end over here. Um, nothing else really new. I'll show you one model kit that I recently bought, because I just like the look of it. Look of it and we haven't done any of that here recently. And it is this one here. It's an Atlantis Son of Troublemaker. It's a, it's a funny car. 
I just like the look of it, the El Camino with the mid-engine and stuff. Anyways, just bought that and just to have something to do one of these days. And honestly, guys, that's about it. I got That's all I got to tell you for now. I did have one other thing to tell you guys, and that is that the reason I haven't put out a video in just a week or so is that we just had our Southern New Mexico State Fair. Uh, we did real well out there. We had a lot of people through. I worked five days straight standing up, which didn't do me any good either. Uh, but um, we ran trains. We had good luck out there. We ran multiple trains uh, all the time almost. Uh, we had a couple of new guys. The one new guy ran two trains all the time. He's familiar with Digitrax and DCC. That was a blessing. Um, we had a lot of people through and I I believe that we collected about five hundred and eighteen dollars in donations. Then we had a member that's another new member that is on a trip to Scotland right now got the email and he matched it. So we did well at the, this fair and um, but that's where I've been and it was successful and all the trains ran good as I said and that's it. Well everybody there it is. Uh, as I said not much happening but uh, it is what it is and I will see you the next time and thanks for watching.